Welcome to Travels with Phil. This one is about D-Stretch, an amazing tool to use on rock art. Rock art digital enhancement. Now I've been to a lot of rock art, ancient Indian uh, markings on rocks, etc. all over the United States, well, and some in Mexico as well. And one of the things that you will notice if you visit these places is that a lot of the things are a little bit hard to see. And a guy by the name of John Harmon, he created a program called D-Stretch, which is for rock art digital enhancement. And so he can take some of these uh, very, very hard to see uh, drawings, sketchings, uh, paintings on rocks, and by uh, manipulating them th with this uh, special program, uh, you are able to much better see what the, ma the material was, what actually happened on the rock itself, in some cases many thousands of years ago. So this is a basic guide on how to get it, and I also include where you can get it, and I think it's a very good addition to your toolbox. Okay, here we are. I'm Phil Constantine, going to do a little bit about D-Stretch. Now, D-Stretch is a, a program, a software program, that works with photography. And it works with a program called Image J if you're using your computer. And what you do is you bring up Image J, and that's what I'm doing right now. And there it is. And you can add uh, D stretch to it. And the basic function of D stretch is to change the way that uh, colors appear. And so what you do is if uh, it's particularly useful when you're dealing with uh, pictographs, pet, uh, petroglyphs, rock art, if you prefer. And let's uh, take a look here under just, uh, well, let's try here. I'm going to give you an ex example here. Bring up this picture. There we go. All right. Now, on D-Stretch, it's got these built-ins right here. And what it does is by clicking on any one of these, it gives you a different way of handling the colors that are coming through. And in petroglyphs, uh, mainly, or pictographs, where you paint using paint, it also helps to bring up little things that are not necessarily visible in plain light. And it makes them a little bit more obvious to see. Now these are just various presets. See down here toward the bottom here. LDS, they all have different meanings and it just explains it. LAB, LRE, RGB, another one. And this gives varying contrast and you can do other things. You can uh, adjust, uh, you can put multiple, you can change things in here. You can uh, uh, bring in uh, you know, different adjustments. There's a lot of variety that's in here. You can change the scale. So like right now, this is 15. It adds a wide variety of uh, numbers here. You can go from uh, two. So let's do two and do, uh, this would be, you see up here in the title X or Y, X, X. Let's go up and do Y. Let's do RGB. Not much on RGB on 2.5. Bring it up to about 15. And then do RGB. There you go. Bring it up to, uh, let's say, 50. And do RGB. And you see just major changes in here. Now, I'm going to show you some examples of uh, how I've done this. Uh, this is an, uh, I'm not going to save that. So I'm going to close this out, go back up to file up here. And this is, this is it. I'm just sticking it off on the, the edge so you can see it a little bit better. Go up to file and do open. And let's see here. Scroll through these. Let's see what else I've got here. Let's go up to this part here. Done. Now these are some ones. All right. Now I'm going to do 211 here. Just photo 211. Now this was taken in Indian Hill. This is called the Blue Sun uh, Cave right here. And just try some variations here and do the different ones. Go up to plugins, go over to D stretch, and this allows the whole thing. You can actually do individual ones if you want to, but let's just try variations and see what it looks like. Well, that's a big one. <laughs> All right. Now, if you have a low pixel uh, picture, it's going you're going to get a lot of pixelations here. If you have a high pixel picture, you're going to get different ones. All right. So I'm going to just show you as an example. Close that out there. Go over here to some of the ones I've already done using the uh, uh, the higher pixel pictures. And here you go. This is the, the same place. And then this was just using the LAB setting. So you can see a lot of variations here. Now this part right here in the center, you can see a little discolorization, sort of a burnt sienna kind of color there. When you add just the LAB variations, it really brings it up. So it highlights varying things out there. 
and makes them look more obvious. If you look right over here, it looks sort of like a lowercase a for a typeset. Whoops, sorry. There you go. That comes on and off. All right, same, same place, just moved over a little bit. And the little dot here in the center, can't really see it too much, too well with your naked eye. And this also helps sometimes to determine which one's on top and which one's below. Now, this could be used in paint, uh, you know, artwork uh, to determine if there's been you know, some variations when steps came in. But it really, really works well uh, for, uh, again, rock art. And a lot of folks, you can get this online, uh, the co main computer version. You can get it for free by going to the D-Stretch uh, website. And uh, uh, the owner, Darn, uh, Don Harmon, uh, John Harmon, uh, can send it to you or you can order it uh, online for your phone and uh, that's uh, I think $20 each for either Android or uh, the um, iPhone and so I'll, and the last time I went out to a rock art site in April 2019 a lot of folks out there brought their uh, cell phones with it which already had it on there and they were able to look at things at the scene itself and do and do check it out and say oh there might be something there and then they look at it closer with their eye and then they can make some determination as to what really might be there so there you go now you can see that's a true color picture of my walking stick my Cherokee family name is Udalanusti which is a walking stick so I figured it's appropriate I have one and you see the variations on colors just uh, by adding that. So this is, gives you some idea of some of the things that you can do with D-Stretch. So you can find some things that are not necessarily uh, automatically uh, visible. Uh, and uh, let's try one more thing out here. There's, uh, there's one particular uh, bunch that I want to show you here. All right. Now this particular one, this gives you a good example. Now you can see various patterns and shapes here and things like that but let's add some d-stretch to it and see exactly how it changes all right and you can actually put these side by side if you want to so you can compare the uh, original with the uh, one that's uh, being uh, processed here so look at that these right here these marks and traces here they're hard to see on the original. This variation, YBR, YBK. There's, there's, there's reasons for these indications in the program. You can tell you, and you can go to the websites. But there you go. This right here on the left-hand side, you see by the, the cursor. If you look over here on the left-hand side, while it's visible, it's not very obvious. The LDS version, even more so. So you can see these are very, very distinct when you look at them this way. So this would help you determine exactly what's at a site or to see it better, you know, after the ravages of time, etc. It makes it easier to see what exactly was may have been better or closer to the, what the original artwork may have looked like compared to what it looks like now. Now, this is not saying this is what the original colors were, but this lets you see the actual spots where there's variations in the coloration of what's, what's going on. All right, another very, very good feature of uh, D-Stretch is you can do batch processing. So you go up here to Plugins, click on D-Stretch, come all the way down here to Batch. And this is just the in information. And what it'll do is it'll come up here and say, all right, which is the input uh, place that you want? So I will go to where I have got my D-Stretch stuff already set there. And normally what you do, you could open up a file that you know, or a folder that's got all the pictures that you're interested in anyway. So but I'm going to tell it I want to start with the, the one that's in D-Stretch and then within D-Stretch, double click on that and let's do the originals, which is right here. So that's the file we're going to open it up in. And then where do you want to put it? The output. So I just want to put it in the uh, just the regular old D-Stretch folder. So I'm going to click select on that. You can do your variations on what uh, kind of uh, uh, modifications you want. I'm going to do the LAB just to pick it for arbitrary reasons. And then up here, look at this. It's, it's piling them in there quickly. Of the 287 photos in here, I, it's already done 50, 60 of them. Can't even keep up with it while I'm talking about it. And this just goes on so quickly. And uh, so these are all the variations here already in all of these uh, different uh, uh, 
sites, literally. I mean, it's just going so quickly. It's it's just hard to keep up with it. It's happening so fast. Uh, there you go. This is the Grand Gallery in uh, Horseshoe Bend in uh, Utah. And this, again, is not the original colors. And these are not true colors, but this just gives you some idea of the variations in the shades and the pictures that are going on. And literally here, just it's already got over 200 of these done. So you could come through and do multiple versions, you know, rather than just coming through and doing every particular one. You'll notice in some cases where if you've got like here, I've got multiple pictures in the same spot, that one particular variety of the built-in, the easy to use ones, uh, it seems to work best, so you just go ahead and process the entire folder of photos with that one just to see how it came through. But there we go. It took 55 seconds to do this for 280 some odd photos. So that's one of the very, very good features of D-Stretch. And uh, let's uh, take a look here at the uh, website for D-Stretch. And let's find it here. Okay, let's try looking for the website for D-Stretch itself, dstretch.com, and there we go. Rock Art Digital Enhancement. It's a plug-in for the ImageJ program. It's done by uh, John Harmon right there. And right here you can see some variations. These are, I think, in Africa. Maybe Australia, I can't remember which, but look, the yellow one is just almost impossible to see in the natural color. But when you start going through the variations, all of a sudden this particular one it's not originally drawn as yellow, but it just really pops out. And so this is the website you can go to, dstretch.com. It says here that professionals, it's called a decorrelation stretch. And um, I may have said D-stitch, I mean D-stretch. And it says here, 8.3, it's free for amateurs, professionals. They'd appreciate a donation. And then you can also go to, um, um, what you call it, uh, you can go to... Uh, Apple or Google to get it for your cell phone. Now for cell phones, it's twenty dollars. But here you go. Um, see, that's how faded that particular one is. There, that's here in San Diego uh, County, and uh, there he is. There's the man himself. I've met him a couple of times at Rock Art Symposiums. Nice guy. And so there you go. That's uh, where you can go to get it. Or again, you can go to the uh, uh, the um, the stores the Google Store and the Apple Store and get the plug-in for your cell phone. Again, I'm using the one that works on my uh, desktop or uh, laptop, which again was free. Uh, he will he has to send it to you, so you have to uh, be able to, to reach him. And again, you have to sh demonstrate to him that there's something that you're doing that is of a uh, good purpose for it. But if you're doing a rock art, especially, this is just absolutely excellent for it. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up by clicking on the button below. You're welcome to leave comments below as long as the language is family friendly. And finally, if you'd like to see more of my videos, please subscribe to my channel by clicking the button over on the bottom right hand corner. Thank you again for watching.